Excelsior Fight Fans, and welcome to GOP Debate Analysis. I'm Alex Pierpaoli. Last night in Ohio, the United States of America's Republican Party held their first presidential debates, co-sponsored by the Fox News and Facebook, for the 17 candidates who've entered the race seeking the party's nomination for the 2016 election. The candidates squared off in two separate debates, organized by where they currently stand in the latest polls. At 5 p.m., the first debate featured seven candidates, while later, in prime time, the main event pitted ten men vying for the job of head honcho of the United States of America. Since we so often hear the language of boxing used to describe what happened in our political debates, we thought it would be interesting to get the perspective of someone who has been in both the fistic and political arenas. My guest tonight is none other than four-time heavyweight challenger Jameel Big Time McCline. If Marvel Comics was ever to design a heavyweight, he would probably look a lot like six foot six inch 260 pound Jamil McCline. McCline retired in 2012 and finished boxing with a professional record of 41 victories, 13 defeats, 3 draws, and 24 knockouts. In 2014, McCline was unsuccessful in a try for South Florida's 20th district congressional seat, losing in the primary to 23 year incumbent Democrat Alcee Hastings. I spoke with McCline last night, soon after the close of the primetime debate, and here's what he had to say. Well, it was really exciting. I mean, they came out fighting, they came out swinging. Um, uh, I mean, the two hours went by like that. It was like a, it was definitely entertainment, for sure. The crowd really liked Carson. I mean, Carson... He, he, he seemed like he was a little nervous at the beginning, but it wasn't. He was the same all the way through. So obviously, it wasn't, it wasn't nerves. He's just very uh, calculated in his delivery. But it, it seemed like Carson got a lot of. It seemed like he got applause every time he spoke. Um, I don't think Rubio won. I think Rubio was just too political. If that makes any sense in a, on, a, on, a, on a purely political stage, uh, Walker, it just, I mean, those sleepy eyes. I mean, I mean, who's going to go for it? The man looks like he's tired. Yeah, he, he does have that. Uh, he does look very, he looks exhausted. <laughs> yeah, he, but he just got sleepy eyes. Um, uh, Christie seems a little, even when he's very low in the polls, he barely made the stage for the big boys. He barely made the main event. But uh, Christie, you know, so I think Ron picked fights with too many people, maybe one or two. But he, I mean, he fought with everyone. I mean, Donald came out screaming immediately, and I thought some of his answers were rather. Um, I thought he was rather. Class. He has no respect. Yeah. He has no respect for anyone. Um, um, I think he's pompous. I think he's um, uh, crass. I don't think he has any class. Uh, ben Carson seems so much more eloquent than him. Not as rich, not as famous, but so much more eloquent than uh, uh, Trump. Um, uh, who else uh, was on that stage? Um, Oh, I mean, what's his name? Was uh, Huckabee was invisible? Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought they tried to get because it, it seemed like they would go long periods of times without talking to a certain candidate, but then they come back to that candidate for several questions later. I mean, it was a two-hour debate, but what I did find very, very different. Was or very what I found very peculiar, I guess, was that um, uh, uh, Theorona, uh, the, the Hewlett Packard uh, CEO, yeah, former CEO, she made an appearance at the big boy table via uh, videotape. I thought that was very telling on how well she did early in the night. Yeah, yeah, I I haven't seen that um, her her performance yet, but I'm hearing that that. Um 
that she did really well. I mean, I mean, look, I mean, she used, I mean, that she was used in the uh, post. She was using the big boy debate for question. So uh, it's a very, very apparent. See, and what I also noticed, because I go a little deeper, what I also noticed was that they brought her, they, they used a video of her, but that, that wasn't by mistake. That was definitely by design by Fox, because this is the first debate I've ever seen that has been controlled by a uh, media outlet. So what that media outlet also did was they feel like she did well enough to be at the big boy table. So what they did was they gave her an appearance via video on the big boy t- at the big boy table. Do yeah. Is there something interesting about that? Because you know how there's been um, that idea of the war on women. Um, so perhaps uh, that you're right that that was by design by Fox to try to show, hey, look. Um, we are even we are even um, highlighting our republic our female Republican candidate because look she brought up this really good point in the earlier debate and we'll even show you um, you know the point she made you're right that that and I I thought that what was interesting about that because Megyn Kelly's question was really about women and some of the really nasty things that Donald Trump has said and done over the years to women um, and he. As much as he he just basically blamed politically correctness, uh, political correctness, he didn't own any of his past. Well, he he kind of did in a joking way own some of his comments, but then he even sort of attacked her personally. Oh my God! I have never seen someone so disrespectful to the moderator. He not only attacked Megyn Kelly with that comment you're referring to, he also attacked. He also um, uh, 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 attacked um, uh, 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 the, the not fair the other the other. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Chris Wallace. He also attacked Chris Wallace with a really nasty look and 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 and, 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 and facial expression when they were, when they were in the middle of an, an exchange on something like he was like yeah but it was so disrespectful <laughs> I tweeted about it right when he did it. Never saw someone so disrespectful, I tweeted, um, as uh, Trump was to a moderator. I've never seen that on any political debating stage. It just, he just, he has no respect. And I'm, you know, so he has no respect for anyone. And he's just not, and the other thing that, there, there are several things that struck me. One was the, um, the, CEO, the former CEO of uh, Hewlett Packard gets an appearance. Um, which really just go to the argument that Fox News is definitely cahoots, and that's okay, but it's, it's, it's unprecedented. They're actually in cahoots with the, with the uh, RNC, and so now, with the whole women's rights thing, yeah, she did do well. She legitimately did well, but they are actually... They, they, they are puppeteers. They are bringing her to the main table. Also, what I noticed was I'm looking and I, I just didn't see anybody presidential. Yeah. I mean, that's what it comes down to. A lot of it is optics for, for, for the basic American who, who votes, but who's not, who's not t- completely engaged and completely educated on the, uh, on the uh, candidate. It comes down to optics. And I tell you, none of them looked presidential. No one looked stately to me. I thought Rubio was very well put together as far as how tailored his suit was, how tailored his shirt was, and how, and how well his tie was placed. But other than that, no one looked presidential. Now, he, um, the, there's two of the guys there are from Florida, uh, the state where you ran for office. Um, how did you feel? So uh, both Rubio and uh, Bush, how did you feel they were on the issues? I mean, did they say anything you liked or uh, not so much? No, I mean, you know, obviously I ran for the Democratic uh, seat uh, against uh, a 23, 23-year incumbent uh, Congressman Alfie Hastings of the 20th District here in South Florida, but, you know, uh, I did not see any, um, I did not hear anything new, I did not hear anything innovative, I did not hear anything exciting, anything that would challenge the, 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 
the, the status quo of not only Florida politics, but national politics from either of the, from either the, the current uh, Senator Rubio or the former Governor Bush. Uh, it was way too scripted to me. Um, Bush seemed a little, um, he was, uh, he was definitely tall, stately to a certain extent, but didn't really say anything that made a difference as far as policy is concerned. What else would be another thing that struck me tonight was that there was nothing different. What I'm so I'm shocked, the more educated I become in politics and how things work and how the system works, I'm shocked that America is not just simply tired of it. It's nothing new is said. Every single issue cannot be black or white, literally, or Democratic or, or Republican. Um, uh, someone getting um, someone getting shot by a black, getting shot by a white cop cannot be a Democratic Republican issue. Um, uh, abortion cannot be a Democratic and Republican issue only. It just makes no sense to me, and I just don't understand how America doesn't get that because what you're saying is that when you're when you're saying let's take the abortion issue you're saying that republican women don't don't doesn't use planned parenthood ever are you saying republican uh female voters do not get abortions i mean it's cool it's just it's almost it's almost insulting yeah. It's almost, it's, almost, it's almost intellectually insulting. Why is it wrong? Why was it wrong for Governor Christie to hug uh, President Obama at such a devastating... And at that moment, when that hug occurred, that was an American moment. That was not a Democratic moment. That was not a Republican moment. That was a... That was an American moment where two of our leaders came together and embraced it for, because of the pain they felt for the suffering of the people that they govern and lead. Now, for that to be turned into a situation where um, it is a negative, again, it just goes to the fact that I just think that these people are so out of touch as it relates to the everyday American. I don't know if you agree with that, but I will tell you, it's, it's to me, it just boggles my mind that they are so unable I mean, who are they pandering to? Are they pandering to this staunch, hardcore left and this staunch, hardcore right, which is not America. America is 15, is 10 to 15, 18% staunch either way. The rest of America is right down the middle who uh, they'll vote I mean that's another 80% of America is like yeah you know I have some democratic value yeah you know I'm uh, I'm, uh, I'm socially prog progressive but I'm fiscally uh, conservative and so you know it depends on what what this, these candidates say it depends on which way I'm going to go they it, it blows my mind that they all think that it's just black and white out there and they just pander to it and, 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 and I know it's politics but it just, it just blows my mind. On some of the issues, they did try to, like, out-extreme each other. Um, like, I'm more pro-life than you. Uh, I was surprised, um, I think it was Scott Walker, who they asked him the question that he's even um, anti-abortion, uh, pro-life, to the extent that uh, in the case of incest, in the case of, in the case of rape, in the case where the mother's endangered, and he wouldn't back away from that. Um, when Megyn Kelly asked him, he said that, um, yeah, he, he really believes in the, um, uh, the sanctity of uh, life, and he got a rousing applause from it. 
Uh, so yeah, it, there are there are extremes at play in these um, in these party debates. That's for sure. At the moment, Governor Walker made that statement, or or rather, when he doubled down on his belief that uh, the sanctity of the sanctity of life begins at the moment of conception. I believe he nailed the coffin and is a sustained run for president of the United States because what you're saying to the people that are listening and to the people that it matters to is that Republican women do not get abortions. Republican women have never been raped and impregnated. Republican women have never had a problem with um, with a birth that needed to be unfortunately aborted. Uh, that Republican women have never been impregnated uh, through rape from a family member. I mean, these are the, the things that that are. That there are millions of Americans who secretly hold these truths inside themselves, and when they listen to these these uh, party leaders that they support, and they say these things, it is just so. Again, another insult to intelligence. And then we go to the time. Uh, there was a moment when there was a, some when there was some applause when I think it was Governor Kasich. Uh, uh, that uh, when he referred to still loving a close friend who got married, who who uh, just married a, uh, it was a, a, in a gay marriage. Right. I noticed there was a lot of applause in that audience during that moment. That to me said that there are a lot of Republicans, not only who have gay people in their family, but gay people that they know who have been married. Yeah, and then, and for, again, for them to be so staunch on one side of the issue, it says to me that this is going to be a really tough race for them. Because I mean, I, just, I noticed that I, again. I tweeted about it because I noticed immediately there was applause in. There was no booing. It was applause that he had said. I know lots of people. In fact, I just went to a gay marriage. Right. Because someone is gay does me does not mean I cannot support that. So there's a lot of people out there on both sides of the aisle who believe that the Supreme uh, Court, not just more than six weeks ago, uh, was really truly reflective of how America feels. Overall, it was definitely entertaining. Um, and it's uh, a tremendous amount of bloviating. Yeah. <laughs> a, a tremendous amount. I mean, it, I, it just, it just sometimes I was just looking at my, and my eyes would just glass over and all I would hear was blah, 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 blah. Because it's the same things you hear over and over and over and over when in, in, when, when in truth, our country is doing and not because I ran for Democratic office, not because I vote Democratic. Most of the times so I definitely voted for some Republican um, for some Republican candidates in the past. But it, it's so true. It's like I remember I made a comment and I wrote a small um, post uh, after um, after we got destroyed. The Democrats got destroyed in the last election, and they won the House and the, and the uh, Senate. I remember saying, okay, we get health care through, we, uh, uh, gas prices are down, employment is up. Um, uh, I made some really good points, and I can't remember them all, but they were really good Democratic, uh, Democrat, Democratic policy points. Right. Yeah, but yet, but yet we're so divisive in our politics in America, we still can't see past five feet in front of us, but yet we'll still go out and vote for this, the same party to run the GOP, uh, to run the uh, House and Senate that, that got us into not one, but two wars. What country fights two wars? How insane is that? 
who, who, who do we think we are? Two wars? We got the, the, the nerve to fight two wars? All the deregulation in the financial system that got us into the financial crisis at the end of 2007, beginning of 2008, that destroyed not only uh, municipalities, homes, lives of people here in our, in our country, but also the, the, the rest of the world, which I think uh, was the biggest crime against uh, humanity in the, in the history of mankind. And it, and it began with the Republicans deregulating Wall Street to the point to where a bank can say to Joe Plummer, who makes $50,000 a year, you can buy a house that's worth 650000 with no verification of income. That was the beginning of the end for not only, again, I'll say it again, not only for America, but for the rest of the world, because I remember uh, uh, reading articles and, and watching documentaries about the economic downfall, how it not only destroyed lots of American lives, but also lives in Iceland, Finland, Scotland, places, Ireland even, places that bought into all these mortgage-backed securities. So here we are, we finally get the, the things back on track financially. We finally get things back on track. We dial back the war a little bit. Um, we finally get things in place and we still just see our president and I'm going to have to say, I'm sorry, it, it, because it has to be because of the color of his skin. Otherwise, no other president would be destroyed the way he is after doing so much good. He has done so much great for this country, but yet we hate him. And, and, and we, we still vote in Republicans who want to talk about abortion and, and gay rights and, and things that really don't matter to the bottom line. And that is putting food on the table for our American families. Yeah, that was one of the things I, I was wondering what you thought about, because there was a couple of things in what you just said there. One, um, poverty, I didn't think it got mentioned until um, at least uh, 90 minutes into the debate, maybe a little less. Maybe it was like 20 after 10 when it got mentioned. And then soon after that, soon after that, Black Lives Matter uh, got mentioned. And then I wanted to ask you what you thought when Ben Carson said, because about what he said about, uh, like you said, about race and, and about his blackness and, and other people's blackness, how, uh, especially as a neurosurgeon, um, he was saying how when you open up a person's head, everybody's the same. Um, I, I think that was something interesting, but at the same time, if you notice, it got a really big applause uh, to me, I wasn't sure that was all that great because it was it was sort of a black guy saying, "Hey, look, let's not talk about race." No, and that's why he's you know you're very astute uh, because as a black man, an educated black man, a uh, uh, quote unquote token black. Black man that I am in my social circle, I took that as that, that the applause is yay. We have a black one outside who's smart <laughs> and who and who's saying, "Oh, it's not about race." See, he's black, but he's saying what we say, so we must be correct. And, yeah, and, and it's again. You know, it, 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 it plays to politics. It, it's very simple. It's a, it's a very simple game, although very brutal. Uh, I make, I oftentimes make comparisons to politics that I make to, uh, uh, I, also, I oftentimes make comparisons to both the fight game, which I was one of the best in the world at, and in politics, which I tried to run. Um, uh, it's a very brutal game, but it seems, it, it's just like it's just like boxing as well. It's very basic, but very brutal. Both games because that was so such a it was such a it's such a basic thing that uh, 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 that the governor, I mean, uh, that the doctor mentioned. But yet it resonated with all the crowd because it was like, yay, 
we're right, a black guy is saying that we're right, why talk about race? Because, because the second you hear someone say, oh, you, you, you're, only, you're only stoking the fire of racism because you're bringing it up. No, not bringing it up in times when it should be brought up is stoking the fire of racism. Right. And and what he was saying was what all the Republicans say, oh, there's no problem with racism. Well, they stopped saying it about three, four months ago uh, after the last uh, black was killed just because he was walk just because he was walking in Walmart with a with a with a in, in, in an open state carry and all that. Right. With a with a, uh, a, a airsoft rifle. But anyway, that was that was something I was surprised. I was surprised we didn't hear anything about guns. I don't think they ever touched on guns. Um, not touched on guns. I did notice that it was it was odd. Uh, they did not. They knew that on the next um, debate because you know guns. Guns is such a horrible, horrible issue right now because you have Lapierre of the. Uh, uh, of the, uh, our, uh, the uh, NRA uh, giving millions of dollars to these candidates, but yet you have all these, this is the third theater incident with involving a gun, a fake gun, whatever, yesterday or today, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. People are killing people with these guns. There's incidents going on everywhere. And now, I remember after, saying, after, after, um, after Sandy Hook, when Louis LaPierre came out and people booed him, and uh, it's, I think the NRA took a big blow then when they uh, defended uh, the Bushmaster, uh, the Bushmaster uh, carrying a kid who kicked in, who kicked in the doors of the school and killed, you know, over 19 men, women, and children. Um, uh, uh, and 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 then the. The Lafayette tried to defend them. I just, I just think that they're like, hey, listen, you know, please keep it quiet because you know, I mean, there is a lot of gun killing now, so we cannot be. And it's more in the last four years than it was now. It's there's more killings now, um, and I just think that you should uh, stay, to take a back seat. I think a lot of them are telling them that, and that's why Fox News is not stupid. Fox News is a brilliant media outlet. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm not saying they're always correct, but there's no doubt that they are brilliant. Yeah. They weren't gonna bring that, well, they weren't gonna bring that up. Of course not. It's just it's a horrible issue for anyone to speak on on a national stage when so many innocent people are being killed because of lax gun laws. I will tell you now if it if, 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 if politics is not is not as equal, it's definitely it's definitely it definitely surpasses the fight game in its brutality. And then when I say that, what I mean is that uh, um, um, yes, I mean, one man, when you when you're modeling model over twelve rounds, one man can find a way to to uh, out, uh, outpoint his opponent and, and, and destroy him and break him down physically. Um, but in, in, in politics, politics will find a way to not only destroy you, you uh, in the polls, they will find a way to destroy you emotionally, physically, financially, and mentally if they can. It is the most brutal. Now that I had a chance to be in it. Now I had a chance to really see the nuances of raising money or trying to raise money. In my case, where I raised very little, the rest all came from uh, I financed my own uh, campaign, basically. Um, uh, all the all the all the, uh, all the listening to how nasty people are to you in public. Um, uh, how nasty people are to you, how controlling voters are to you, knowing that you are trying to get their vote. Um, I had a gentleman say to me one day, where were you? And I was like, what do you mean? Because you were supposed to show up. I was oh, I'm busy. I took the dude. You know, you people, and he, and he spoke to me in a way where I never, no one has ever spoken to me, ever. Really? Even in, even when I was in prison, 
Uh, they didn't speak to me this way, you know, and it was like, why? And I'm thinking, why? Like, like it, it was so, it was just so brutal. It was just very, it was unrelentless. Uh, uh, it was brutal. It was uh, unforgiving. It was um, treacherous. It was conniving. It was deceitful. Everyone with this was deceitful. People lied to me. People conned me out of money. People uh, uh, um, uh, told me uh, one thing, and then it's, when the day came, another thing happened. It was just an amazing, brutal lesson in politics and did and did you um have, what uh, what promoters did you work with you worked with um Aram ever and uh Don King uh, it's worse than those guys uh, well I'll tell you one thing at least Don King this is the thing with Don King I'll never forget when I was getting ready for when I was getting ready to fight Chris Ariola was at the very end of my uh career there very end of my real career where I was very still dominant, the very end of that dominant run. I was fighting getting ready for Chris Ariel. Uh, Don King, I was in the office with Don King. He was on the phone with Goosen, uh, who has uh, passed since then. God bless his soul. Um, uh, and, and I'll never forget, he said to, to the promoter, he said, listen, my fighter wants 325 for the fight. And he won't take any less because he had a different relationship with, with Don than most fighters did. I kind of just demanded this is what I want, and it, and 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 and, uh, and I had the ability to walk away, whereas most fighters didn't have the ability to walk away. So therefore, um, uh, uh, um, he got to beat a lot of them. Having said that, I I remember it was the first time I saw him working. He goes, not the first time I saw him working, but the first time I saw him do what he does. He gets on the phone and he says, well, you know, um, Goosen, the fighter wants this much, and you know me, I, I, get, I, get, I, I get half of what he gets. So if he's not going to take anything less than 320, that means you got to come up with 640 for the fight. And Goosen's like, what do you mean? He goes, well, if he gets 320, I got to make 320. And I couldn't believe, but at least outright, he was, he was, he let me know what he was doing. Right. All in the open is my point. It was all in the open. Um, whereas in politics, it's very deceitful and very conniving and very underhanded. Um, there's, you know, another story I have with Don King. I remember when I went to Don King, uh, I was getting ready for the fight, uh, Cali Pritzko fight. The fight never went off. Um, but I was getting ready for that fight. He pulled out with a very small move by his book on his part, coming off a two and a half year layoff, maybe his first fight back in two thousand and seven was a mistake would have been would have been a mistake for him because I was flying high, I was strong, I was bad, I was still working. He was off for two years. It would have been a really tough fight for him. So he pulled out. I already pulled out a week before the fight. I went to Don King. And I said, Don, I need a fight. I know you got this fight going. Can I get on this card? Well, Jamil, if you want to get on this card, you're going to have to sign a contract with me. No, Don, I don't want to sign a contract. All right, then, then I can't put you on this card. I said, I can sign a one-year contract with you, Don, but I need to be on this card because I've already spent sixty or 70000 in training camp. It would be a waste of money. You know, you got a show coming up a, a month away. Okay, you know, we'll put you on the card. You put you on the card. You'll fight the Raul Williams. And, um, and the main event was Ed Peter and uh, Oleg Skaya. Muskaya um, ends up getting hurt and falls out. I step in the fight. Uh, I step in the fight. Um, San Peter. But in the negotiation, I got him to, I got him to communicate the one-year contract. Otherwise, I wasn't going to take the fight. But it was all posturing, of course I was. But I let him think I was going to walk away like I was doing years before. And he had experience with me walking away, so he didn't want to lose the entire show. And I knew he would lose the entire show if I said I wouldn't fight Peter. So I took that opportunity to not to, to for him to uh, for us to uh, cancel that one-year contract I got from him. 
uh, just um, a week prior, a week or two prior. Uh, not to make a long story, not to make the story too long. So then what happens is he says to me, Jamil, this is what, uh, okay, you'll fight the fight. And um, I said, thanks for the opportunity, done, done. So obviously I go on, it was a tough fight. I thought I still won with the three knockdowns and winning some rounds here and there. I, I thought I won. Uh, and about a year later when we spoke, I was like, All right, you know, I, you know, and, and, you know, that was a horrible fight, is it Jamil? He goes, did you ask me for an opportunity? I said, yes. He goes, Jamil, did I give you that opportunity? I said, yes, you did. He goes, well, you didn't ask me for a win. So I thought to myself, well, I don't really, is this how this works? I should ask for a win. So at least he was forthcoming. At least he was open. At least he was telling me, hey, you didn't win that fight. Even though you did win that fight, because you didn't ask me for an opportunity. If you had asked me for the opportunity to win that fight, then maybe we could have made a deal. Right, that's right. That's how I took it. Right, right. Wow. Oh, that's fascinating. Boy, yeah, yeah that's... That's how I took it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so what happened... Uh, so, at least he's forthcoming. You don't see that in politics. It's very... It's very, 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 yeah. You know, but, you know, I love my country and I thought I could do some good, so I ran and, and I think I may run again, but now I'm, I'm, I'm more seasoned. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Wow, that's really awesome. Well, this has been really great. I really appreciate it. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Um, but, uh, so if you had to, um, if you had to, if somebody said, look, Jamil, I, I need you to pick um, who is going to be the Republican nominee um, again, of that group of people? Uh, and and you could include the other um, the other debate too, if you um, you know that Carly Fiorino, uh, Fiorina rather. Uh, uh, okay, Jeb Bush and Carly Fiorina. Okay. Ah. Okay. Jeb Bush, Bush, Bush is going to be the Republican nominee. And 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 uh, Jeb Bush will be the Republican nominee, and he will select Carly Fiorita as his um, as his uh, running mate. You know, it's interesting because I, I did one of the things I think I posted on um, on Facebook is that to me. Jeb Bush did sound, uh, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but he, he sounded like the most sensible one. And I think maybe that's exactly uh, the point you're making, is that that's what we see a lot in our politics, is a lot of these people have these prepared comments that are, are sort of raw meat to the extremes of the party. And we saw these people throw a lot of that out there. But Jeb Bush... He didn't get the huge applause because he's the one who's most sensible and probably the one who's most likely to be the guy who governs. Well, here's the thing. Those guys, everyone is running a sprint. Jeb Bush is running a marathon. Yeah. For yeah. sure. For sure. Because once that deal fizzes out, those more moderate responses that, you, that we heard from Bush are going to be the ones that get the applause later in the debate. You will see that. One thing I should mention about what you just heard uh, is the shooter involved in the Mad Max uh, movie incident that happened just this week. It did turn out that he actually had a pellet gun and not a, um, a handgun, uh, which was something that... Um, we weren't uh, that uh, Jamil was not aware of uh, when we spoke last night. A very big thanks to Jamil McCline for talking with us, and we hope to do this again for other debates this election cycle. Until next time, fight fans. I'm Alex Pierpaoli.